Hi guys, Mark here. I hope you are well. Today's video is going to cover a relatively simple way for making a Turk's head paracord key fob. This project involves three important knots that pretty much any paracord craftsman should have command over. Let's take a look at the key fob up close. Here you can see a couple of examples of this style of a key fob. So at the top we have a loop. Then a Turk's head knot. Below it a knife lanyard knot. And finally some flush which is trimmed and melted. So this is the project for today. It works well as a key fob, as a knife lanyard or even as a makeshift Christmas tree ornament. Now let's move on to the supplies. The very first supply that we're going to need is going to be some sort of a stick, PVC pipe, pill bottle, anything like that. It should be about an inch in diameter. I'm also going to be using a rubber band to hold one end of my paracord while I'm tying my Turk's head knot. For this project you're going to need a single piece of paracord about 5 feet long. So about a meter and a half. Optionally, some sort of a tool is used to help us tie our Turk's head knot. This is not absolutely required and if you don't have one, you can tie the Turk's head knot without it. Finally, scissors and a lighter are going to be used to cut and melt the ends of our paracord once we have completed our project. Now let's begin tying. We're going to start off by tying a Turk's head knot. To do this, I placed one foot or 30 centimeters of my cord under the rubber band. This is going to be important later on. For now, take the remaining cord in your working hand and start tying. We're going to tie a 3 part 4 byte Turk's head. Do a wrap around like this and come over the standing end. Come around again, take your working end and pass under the standing end on the left. Like this. Now again pick up your working end and pass over under to the right. So over under like this and we now have three cords at the top. Take the left one, place it over the middle one like this. So this is the left cord which is now at the middle. Take your working end and pass over under like this. So over under. Take your working hand and place it alongside the standing hand over under like this. We are now going to double up 
and triple up the knot by following the standing hand using our working hand. This process is also called chasing since we are chasing the standing hand through the knot. So at this point, I have doubled up my knot. I'm going to continue and triple it up by again following the standing hand. So at this point, I have tied my Turk's head knot. I'm going to remove it off of the mandrel, so off of the stick. And I'm going to take my standing hand. It is about a foot long. I'm going to feed the end through this opening where it's coming out and feed it towards the left side like this we're now going to move on to the second step by tying a celtic button knot using our standing hand We are now going to tie a Celtic button knot using the standing hand. Create a loop, create a second loop and place it over your first one. Now, using your working hand, weave through the four cords. Over, under, over, under, like this, so over, under, over, under, take your working hand and pass over, under to, through the center of the knot, like this, so this is the Celtic button knot. Take the other end, so the one on the left, feed it through the Turk's head knot, so through, like this, leaving a small loop on the other side. Then feed your end through the Celtic button knot as well bringing the two ends together. Now tighten up the Celtic button knot by finding the cord coming into the knot. So this one here 
and to remove the slack through the entire knot into the standing hand. Like this. I'm going to tighten up for a second time exactly the same way. So, I'm going to find the cord that's coming out of the Turk's head knot and into the Celtic button knot and pull on it and to remove the slack through the entire knot. The goal here is to bring the Celtic button knot as close to the Turk's head as possible. So like this. So we now have our Turk's head knot, a loop on one side and a Celtic button knot with both ends exiting on the right side. At this point we are going to insert our Celtic button knot into the Turk's head knot. So simply push it in. It's going to act as a cord for your Turk's head knot. Now we're going to find the cord coming out, out of the Celtic button knot. So this is the starting point for our tightening. Simply run the slack through the entire knot and into the loop. It is quite important that you keep your strands neatly lined up one next to the other. So like this into the loop and then pull most of the loop into your short end. Like this. I'm going to do another set of tightening just to get a tight Turk's head knot. Again we start here at a cord coming out of the Celtic button knot and run the slack through the entire knot, this time tightening up a bit more.
Now adjust the size of your loop and we're going to continue with the knife lanyard knot. We are now going to finish up our project using the knife lanyard knot. We have two ends. Take the left one and create a loop. Take the right end, fold it up towards the top, like this. Place it under our loop, take the end and pass over this strand on the top left, so over, then under the left end, then weave over under over through these three strands. So over, under, over, like this. And this essentially ties a Carrick band. You can check that by finding a diamond shape at the center. Take the top right end, pass. Past this top left cord, so past it, and immediately through the center of the Kerrig band, so through the diamond shape. Take the bottom left end, go past this top right strand, and immediately through the center of the Carrick band. Now, simply pull on both ends to tighten everything up. So this is the lanyard knot. It is too far away from the Turk's head knot, so I'm going to work these two ends into the knot and work out the slack into the two working ends. And the other end So like this. This was one tightening of my lanyard knot. I'm going to repeat for a second time, then cut the two ends.
And with this, our project is complete. So guys, that's our project for today. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope that I made things clear enough. Thank you very much for joining me today and I hope to see you next time.